You are now listening to FemRegard Podcast with Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez. Mmm, Fem. Welcome back, Fem Fam. As always, thank you guys so much for listening. And we have another amazing guest. And let us know, you guys, if you miss, you know, the episodes with Jessie and Carolina and you want to hear more about our lives or if you're really loving all these awesome guests we're bringing (laughs) because personally like we're really excited about the people we're finding and that are coming on the show so like we much more interesting than us yeah totally (laughs) (laughs) but today we have D'Angelo Thompson who is a professional hair and makeup artist and he does a bunch of other stuff too we're going to talk about all of that today but we're really excited to have him on so welcome thank you so much for coming on today thank you both for having me thank you so much Absolutely. Yeah, we're very excited to kind of spill the tea on this world a bit because one, we haven't yet on the show. And Mm -hmm. when I was thinking of hair and makeup people, you were the first person to come into mind. And I thought you would do. Yeah, yeah. when I met you, like I met D'Angelo, we were just talking like it feels like a lot of time, but no time has passed. Mm -hmm. And it was probably two years ago. Um, But we had a really conversation you were so open and down to earth and I'm like oh he's like everything I want on the show so <laughs> and to talk to, and to, you've done yeah no of course and to talk about this because you know as independent filmmakers kind of the community we've built around you know a lot of you have to you really be smart with your budget and where you put your money to but I think a lot of times then of course hair and makeup kind of falls to the wayside a bit yes. <laughs> and it's I think it's someone it's important to have someone like you come on the show and speak to why it, it is so vital and maybe some tips and tricks on how to achieve a really good look or how, the, the best way to hire someone because you get you spend all your money on this amazing lighting or that amazing camera you know kit and then if your makeup's like shitty it's gonna like Mm -hmm. fall flat like you're everything that you worked so hard to throw the money into is gonna like kind of then be poo-pooed if you you know you're the main (laughs) subject doesn't look fabulous as everything else so I thought it would be really exciting for us to kind of branch into that but before we get into all of that why don't you just tell us about your career in the hair and makeup like Yes, uh, Carolina, I started first and um, I was in fashion school at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn about 30 years ago, fast, you know, backwards, 1989. <laughs> and while I was in school, yeah, I was trying to figure good. out. <laughs> Girl, I'm old, I'm old, I'm ancient. <laughs> but, um, you know, I was trying to figure out extra ways of making money for school. And my friend said to me, you know, you always do our makeup for parties and fashion shows. Um, why don't you look for a job as a makeup artist? And it never crossed my mind, you know? And I was like, they won't hire me. I'm a guy, they won't hire me. Well, they did. Literally, I went for the interview. I got hired within two days. And that was in a retail environment. But I knew I didn't want to be there full time. I knew I wanted something more creative because I was in fashion school. So I started testing with photographers on the weekend. So my initial career was in fashion. And then it segued into doing press junkets. And that's when I really started to work with, quote unquote, celebrities like Jamie Foxx, Selma Hayek, um, John claude Van Damme. And I was young. I was in my 20s and didn't know what to charge. And I was with McCann Erickson. And they said to me, look, we're doing all these Sony pictures. Um, we need a hair and makeup person each time they do the junket in Northern California. And I was like, oh, OK. I was like, uh, she's like, how much would you charge? I had no idea. I was, and she, I was like, what's your budget? Yeah. And she gave me a number, <laughs> almost fell out of the air. I was like, this can't be real, you know? And back then, they would send cars for you, you know? They would send a limo, you know, which not, you know, huge, uh, what are they called now? Hummers or whatever. They would send action on a limo. And oh my God. from there, I started tapping more into television and film. And I found that I like doing it all. You know, but I'm definitely more savvy in television and film now because I've been doing it for almost 20 years. So that's it. That is so, I'm just picturing Selma Selma Hayek in the 90s and that whole like her (laughs) her style. It was so, oh, I love that. That's so amazing. It worked. And it's it's cool that again, like with all of our guests, it's, 
not so surprising to see that if you just pick something in that vein, it can lead or open doors to like another Definitely. opportunity. So uh -huh. what was, um, do you, what was briefly like your first like television gig and yeah. did you feel like you were comfortable right off the bat or did you, was this again, like a growing process um, because you didn't go to makeup school, right? Or did you eventually mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, this is I, a, that's I, I took classes. Ladies, I took classes, definitely for sure. So I learned a lot of the tricks, mm -hmm. especially coming from fashion into television and film. It's very different. You don't have as much time to do what you want to do. But my mm -hmm. first gig, gig in television was actually for Time Warner Cable, and I was doing commercials. And I did commercials for them for about seven years and then folded into MTV and started doing promos for them for over 20 years. Wow. And I still do them. So I would say Time Warner Cable and MTV were some of my first promos and commercials. That's awesome. Yes, MTV. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Um, I love hearing too that you didn't go to makeup school. I mean, you took some classes, sure. But like, I, I guess in my head, that was something like you had to go to school for. And so that's that's yeah. really cool to hear because me and Carolina talk about that with filmmaking all the time. Like you don't have to go to film school. Like sure, you have to learn how to do yeah. it, but you don't have to go to school to learn. So that's that's yes. exciting for me to hear. <laughs> I think it's important to um, definitely apprentice under someone and learn the ropes, which is I had many mentors that definitely taught me a lot. And then also, yes, taking classes because you're going to need to learn theatrical makeup. Mm -hmm or special effects. And it's best to learn from a school environment and then you can expand upon it once you're out in the market, so. Makes sense. I was just gonna say, like, I feel that nowadays because everything is so high tech advanced, even in like the cinema world to, to achieve certain looks, I feel like it, it does kind of make sense to maybe get some training in certain areas like visual effects or to achieve different looks. Like you can certainly learn, but I think it, it could be, make you more competitive or just better at it by attending some sort of program. It's very vital. And you meet peers as well that once you guys leave school or leave um, a safe environment, as people grow and expand with, you know, within production companies, they also can refer work to you. So it creates a nice community, you know, and I'm assuming with filmmakers too, you have your mm -hmm. community. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's so important to find the people, like we always say, find your tribe, you know, find the people you really vibe with and stuff, but just finding people that can, that you can help each other, you know, they can introduce you to more people, you can help get them jobs, like whatever the back and forth yeah. exchange is, like, it's just so important. We all have to work together. I mean, this, that's just kind of, that's what the industry is, you know, so. Yes, yes. And my career, literally, my contacts, I should say, they expand 20, 30 years. I've known certain producers for over 20 years. And as they've grown within their careers, now they own their own companies or they work for major, major, um, you know, like own or Warner Brothers. Those relationships have grown tremendously. Now the projects that they offer me are much bigger. So I think relationships, a lot of people forget, are so important. They're paramount, actually. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking in that vein, too, I when I was looking, just looking you up in general <laughs> to see exactly what you've done, um, I saw you have this whole beauty and gratitude thing. Can you tell us a little more about yes. that? Yes. Well, gratitude has always been a practice I've had for over 10 years. And I found that being in this business, I was around people, <laughs> I hate to say it, that were constantly complaining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you're at the top of your game. So many people want to be where you are, and yet you continuously complain. And for me to kind of like soothe my own spirit and not take in that toxic energy, mm -hmm. gratitude was something that I always practiced. So I wrote a book when I first moved to L.A. So in 2018, I authored a book called Beauty and Gratitude, which is right here. Love it. <laughs> and um, from Aww. there, I leaned into doing a podcast called Gratitude is a Journey, which is daily. It's under five minutes. It's just, you know, pontificating on ideas, you know, of what does gratitude mean? You know, what does gratitude mean for you? What does gratitude mean for your parents, your grandparents? And it creates an interesting conversation and also puts you in the right mind when you walk into work, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And then Beauty and Gratitude is an expansion of that. It's actually a live show where I have people from all walks of life, not just in our industry, but financial authors, uh, gurus, you name it, to talk about what's beautiful to them and what are they grateful for. And uh, it's been going really well, really, really well, knock on wood. <laughs> I love that. I'm definitely going to subscribe to that. It's such an important you. thing. Absolutely. Like, I mean, Agreed. personally, at the beginning of quarantine, I started doing the, I think it was like 21 days of abundance, Deepak Chopra yes. meditation thing that's been going around, right? And like, yes. I, I think if I wouldn't have like started out quarantine that way, I would have just lost my mind. <laughs> so it's such an important thing to be grateful and come from a place of abundance and like, you know, all of that, like you might not consciously think about it every day, but if that's in your mindset, it makes such a huge difference. Yes. Yes. Are you a podcaster like us? Vlogger, interview conductor? Do you need a VO booth or ADR? Remote audio video professional recording? Ooh, Tessa spilled the tea. Well, the Network Studios in Culver City is a fully functional recording oasis with multiple rooms made to cater specifically to audio podcasts, video interviews, and voiceover, plus an experienced sound engineer with the ability to edit and master, all your needs will be covered. Audio engineer extraordinaire Mike Casentini has worked with several podcast heavy hitters and got us started from the ground up. He's the reason we sound so good. Plus, all of our in-studio guests have been very impressed. To find out more, visit www.thenetworkstudios.com and book your next recording session. COVID compliant and open for business. You know, I know I live alone. So had I had a partner here or lover or whatever, mm -hmm. I don't think I would have been okay. <laughs> 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 because... It, this time was so crucial for me to pivot mm -hmm. and to really see what was working for me and what wasn't, what to let go of and what to move forward with. And so many amazing things happen in this short amount of time. So I know in a way it's a blessing in disguise, mm -hmm. you know, and yes. it may sound crazy, guys, but I mean, I know people who died. I know a coworker who died because I was working on Law and Order SVU season 21. Mm -hmm. And we had a colleague who passed away within 12 days. Wow. So, and it was someone I saw like five days a week and we would laugh together. He introduced me to Lizzo. So I, oh. <laughs> yes. yeah, you know, and I, Aww. like I have chills talking about him. Um, but at the same time, a lot of amazing things happen to so many people, you know? So I know that, the yin and yang of it, it's been um, a kind of blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think our, we were all working at hyper speed, like us as the whole world. And I think something, mm -hmm. you know, like again, the yin and yang, something had to kind of fall apart. But then again, for us to like, like mold into, I love that you use the word pivot because it really is just a change of perspective, a change of like motion and or career, <laughs> like, you know, I've, I've been like pivoting lots of things <laughs> in my life and, mm -hmm. and in the, throughout this time. But I think that's what I love about this whole gratitude and beauty uh, mix, because I think it starts your day with pivoting your, your thoughts, because uh, it's been a struggle throughout this time to not wake up with instant anxiety of, okay, how am I gonna, okay, what are the things I have to do today? And I have all this that I want to do, or I have the job that I'm thinking about always. And you, you just take that right. moment. We can like pivot that to like a yes. better, just a, a gratitude and, and knowing that we've got this, we're all right, we're alive. We have that to yeah. be grateful for. Exactly. And mm -hmm. continue on. So thank you for sharing that because I think it's, we don't we don't grow, go into the pandemic too much <laughs> on our podcast mm -hmm. show, but it is something we like to touch upon because we're all living through that. We're all like, trying to figure out the next thing for us or for some of us mental health like it's a lot yes. of things so um i think that's a, a beautiful thing that you you've been working on a project and it's very important yes yeah and clearly Thank it you. works because listeners he's got an emmy <laughs> <laughs> yes it's right behind me there <laughs> You know what? I won it 10 years ago and mm -hmm. I didn't order it after we got the win. You get the plaque. They okay. send you a plaque. But um, I didn't order the statue and all my friends who won did. And I was just kind of like, 
eh. Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't on, I'm sorry, it sounds so ridiculous. Because it wasn't on my list. You know how you have a list of things you want to accomplish? Yeah. You know, awards were never part of that. For me, it was about being an entrepreneur, being a boss, having many streams of revenue. Uh, Because I think like an artist, but I also think like a businessman. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to have both. Um, So the Emmy was never important. The statue, I should say. Right. But once I got it, which is actually recently, a month ago, I just said, let me just go to the Emmy Org and order the Emmy. And I got it with my name on it and everything. And I was like, oh, and it's heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> I know. I picked one up once. I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a reminder of, you know, now when I look at it, I think about the job I wanted on, which is Wendy Williams show. It was a first and second season. And I remember being very challenged because I, I was the only hair and makeup person for all the guests. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah. Wow. It was a lot of work. Oh, and, God. <laughs> yeah. And I would bring in, I would bring in a, one to three people when it got really heavy days. But overall, I was the only person there. And I remember begging the line producer to bring in a hair person. He's like, you can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. And I did. And um, so that award for me states that, you know what, anything is possible. Mm-hmm. You know, if you put your mind to it and you focus. And there were times where, I mean, certain artists, I won't say their name, would come in, they didn't have their extensions with them. Or there was some girl had a weave or the back of her, you know, the line, the hairline was gone, you know. So like having to like create within a short amount of time. Everybody just kind of Like putting bangs on and, and drawing in edges. But I'm like, that is, <laughs> they are both or getting so hair much from work. you know Ricky. Like, every time that, that makes you laugh, a lot of me. Like, like what you see on me right, right now is life. even a lot this for me. Is what I have great. Thank you. <laughs> but like when we do photo shoots and stuff, and but I do my own makeup, yeah, you can I swear I text Carolina every time. Like I can't believe people do this every day. So yeah, kudos to you for that, and especially like you said on a show like that where you're expected to do that for everyone. You know, that's crazy. Love that because that again. You know, and what started to happen is that actors started shouting me out on the air, Mm -hmm. you know, and which was like Regina King complimented my makeup on air. And so did, um, I always forget her, but Carol Channing, Mm -hmm. you know, old school theatrical actress. She shouted me out. And, you know, I thought, wow, you know, the generational gap was amazing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they saw my effort and they saw the hard work. So when I look at the Emmy, it reminds me of those moments where people actually said, thank you, you know? Yeah, so I, I think that. that's important. So. And you're starting to get into producing, correct? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, you know, what you guys do as independent filmmakers and producers, it's a lot of work. And I've been on indie films mm-hmm. and I've been on features and a lot of things come across my desk and scripts, um, you know, people wanting money <laughs> to help them produce a film or a project. And I'm like, send me your project. Let me read it. So two years ago, I got three that I really believed in. One was called Sometimes Why, which was a feature. The second one was called Sweet Thing, which is really about diabetes within urban communities. And the third one was Burden. Burden is the one that I'm currently promoting, which is um, a 20 minute feature short about micro and macro aggressions and racism oh, wow. with racism and it's pretty it's we're getting a lot of awards we're you know it's and it's also in diversity inclusion programs at corporations you know um so it's been a blessing to not only see a project want to invest in it and also get a return on it mm-hmm. which is doesn't happen often with short you know indie features yeah. um yeah. one sold actually in April. Wow. So we have a distribution deal, sometimes why feature, which came out of nowhere, guys. I wasn't looking for it. The director and writer and other producer, we were not looking for it. The actress, actually, she's like, look, I have a contact and they might be interested in distributing your film. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of apprehensive, but then (laughs) we sent it to them 24 hours later. We had a contract. That's amazing. You know, it's been it's been an, uh, a, a huge lesson because it's not easy, as you know, uh, producing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it challenging, uh, but I, I love it. And I only do it for projects I really believe in. Mm-hmm. I can be a ghost producer where I, or an angel producer where I'm not there at all. 
or I'm actually there on set and watching the process. It just depends on what, um, like what you guys would want as a, as a production company, Mm -hmm. you know? I love that. Like that really shows that it's, it is something you love and believe in, you know, as opposed to, Oh, "Oh, I'm going to go into producing because that I'd be good at it and make money or whatever, you know, like this, it's obvious that it's something you really care about, which is so important. That's, and that's what leads to, I think, the success, like it, the energy in it coming mm-hmm. to you, like you said, you weren't looking for it, but you like you were just going to say you care about the artist and the project. And I think that's where return happens. You, you, yes. it, like that whole stimulation that you create, it just will come back. And, and that's why I think it is important to invest, especially because producing isn't a walk in the park to invest oh, in no. a project <laughs> oh, no. you care about and work with artists that you inspire you because they will be excited and they will want to work with you and, and make those calls happen that you weren't even expecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And preparation, you know, and producing preparation, I think is key. Uh, Nathan Hell Williams is a writer and director. I've done probably four projects with him over the past 10 years, actually five. He is so prepared when we get on set. And we normally have eight to 10 hour days. They never go above. I mean, the whole day yeah. is probably 10 hours. That's great. And <laughs> he knows exactly what he wants to do when he's on set. And he's a, the producer, but often he's written a project and it's directing. But he knows like, this is the budget we have. And we're going to stick within this budget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Well, D'Angelo, thank you so much for coming on today because this has been like yeah. super inspirational. I just love, you know, your mindset and where you come from with all of this. And clearly, like I said, it's been working. Absolutely. Um, let our listeners know how they can kind of follow your journey, where they can find you, all that good stuff. Yeah, I'll give you three things. Uh, at DTBeauty71 is Instagram. And Gratitude is a Journey is on anchor.fm. You also can find it on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And also check out my work on my website, www.deangelothompson.art. Thank you. And we'll we'll type all that in the uh, show notes for you guys too, just, you know, in case spelling errors or anything like that. But absolutely. But yeah, thank you so much for coming on today. This was fabulous. Tessa and uh, Carolina, thank you guys so much. Thanks for listening to Femme Regard Podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in next time for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals over tea. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcast. If you leave us a great comment, we might give you a shout-out on the show. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com.